two foods. Is that fantastic? Pardon? I'm sorry, I can't hear, and we don't have microphones, so. Well, if it's illegal, nobody, no sheriff has knocked on my door yet. I haven't had, it may be, I'm not giving you legal advice. I have not had any problems in the United States with, um, with claims of any kind, including this, and this has been mailed out in the millions. Oh, in, in the U.S. in particular, you have, with First Amendment products, that is information products, a lot of leeway. Again, I'm not giving you legal advice. I'm sure a lawyer would say, you're on shaky ground. But we've never had a problem with this or other offers. Now, you're the only audience that I've ever, it's 2,500 people. No one has asked in this audience what those two far, foods are. And I'm not going to tell you because you haven't asked. You get in life what you ask for. No one has asked, so I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> okay, I wanted to tease you a little bit and see if you're paying attention. Those two foods are uh, linseed oil and cottage cheese. But the linseed, it sounds terrible. Somebody went, yeah, but it tastes really good. We have it a couple times a week, and... Uh, you want to make sure that the linseed oil is fresh, or it can be called flaxseed oil. Flaxseed or linseed oil, depends on the country. Flaxseed or linseed Talk with your health food store. If you can't get the actual oil, make sure it's freshly pressed, cold pressed. If not, get the flax seeds and grind them yourself. And a lot of people have found, Dr. Budvig recommends this to all her patients. She was 94 years old when she wrote that book a very uh, fantastic person. And we use it ourselves. I don't market anything, by the way, that I don't use it myself. If I don't have passion for it, believe in it, I don't market. I'm not interested in it. I've had people come to me that have health products. One of the questions I ask when I'm interviewing pr prospective clients, how much of these supplements do you take? You know what some of them say? None. I say, well, then go find somebody else with all due respect. I'm not interested. You want me to help you market a product you're not involved with yourself? You got the wrong guy. When I asked Dr. Hittich, the founder of Green Power, how much of his products did he take, and he gave me a list of the supplements he takes daily. That impressed me. I knew that his heart was in the right place. Anyway, let me take you quickly through the... Uh, that's a picture of Dr. Budvig, the actual full-color picture. Very attractive, 94-year-old woman. And... I don't have time to get into all the bonuses, but I named all the bonuses. I, they came from other failed books. I basically took chapters of other books and created the bonuses. I mean, look at some of them. The truth, I can't even read it here. I, I, know, I can't get into the analysis, of, but there's a hot bonuses, and on the back of the order form, there are what readers are telling us, a couple of testimonials, and there's a double guarantee. You can either get the book, and if you don't like it, send it right back for a refund, or keep it for a year. If you're not happy, send it back for a full refund. Is that good? I mean, no question about it. Okay, here's the letter itself. Page one of the letter on the left. You remember, at last, there's an answer to cancer. But look at some of the techniques. The four most important, look at on the upper right-hand side, there's one of the bullet points, is a headline on each page of the letter, see? Isn't that an interesting graphic? An interesting graphic way. One of our, well, the graphic designer that worked for me for many years in my publishing company, she's now freelance. She did all the graphics here. Beg your pardon? That's right. That's right. I've only got two. <laughs> Actually, I only have one because I'm. I'm using a single column format in a letter normally, not a double column. Now, the signature always use only one color, process blue. Write this down, process blue in the signature. It's the, the color that works best, not black, not green, not red. Many people use black because it's cheaper. You run it through the press once, you use black. Use process blue, your orders 
more than justify the cost. Use a PS. The second most read part of any letter, first read part is what? The headline. The second best, most read part is the PS. Always have a PS in your letter. When you're writing to your mother, your grandmother, your children, get in the habit of using a PS and use a headline in all your letters. I write when, when I write to my grandson, Grandpa wins tennis tournament. You know? <laughs> That gets his attention. He's a champion tennis player himself. So, anyway, uh, always use a PS. Okay, I wanted to show you graphically. This is what's called a tear sheet. This is a uh, this is the kind of a thing that made Danny Levinas a fortune. He sent out about 30 million tear sheets with different products that I wrote the copy for. But notice on this one, the shark about ready to eat the sandwich. The headline: How to stop the competition from eating your lunch. Now that kind of a, I basically wrote the copy and gave a suggested uh, tip on how to do the graphic. And the artist sent, drew some pictures and I chose them and used the graphic. Some of the copy that you use, a good graphic is better than a picture in that kind of a case. If you stage that, it would look phony. But it, here's another example. Catapult yourself to the top become an electrifying public speaker. Is that true? You become electrifying, you're gonna head for the presidency, you rise faster in any organization, but look, there's a cannon with an executive going to the bullseye. See, a graphic, the way you use a graphic effectively. Okay, here's a letter that I wrote, this now in German. A single mistake which breaks tough new German labor laws could cost you a fortune. Now, the German entrepreneur, when he reads that, scares him to death, doesn't it? One good technique in marketing is give people a headache and sell aspirin. Give people a headache and sell aspirin. You see what I'm doing? I'm giving the person a positive headache because it's true. If the person makes a single mistake, they're in big trouble with the German authorities. Isn't it good to invest a small amount of money to have a book that shows you what to avoid? So positive fear is what I use a lot. Again, I don't have time to get into all the emotional responses that I look for, that I create in copy, but only to tell you that uh, emotion is the, the thing that we, that we need to capture and, and generate in our prospect. There's the outside envelope. How to reduce personnel costs and still comply with Germany's tough new labor law. Answers to every manager's most pressing problem. You can see where a manager would want to read that, correct? Every manager, because they're responsible. And here's the sales letter, a few techniques. See the sales letter, you see the uh, highlights that we have reproduced by the printer. So I have certain words, certain subheads. The secret of highlighting is not to highlight too much, because if you highlight too much, then nothing stands out. You gotta have very limited, two or three sentences, two or three words, two or three sections in the page. Okay. Now, three elements must be in balance to succeed in a sales letter. Three elements. Number one, the offer. Number two, the list. Number three, the copy. Now, what do you think is the most important element? The most important part of any sales letter is the list, because you could have the greatest sales letter in the world that goes to the wrong market, no one will respond. If you have people, your list, let's say, or your prospects are bass fishermen, and you have a book about how to catch salmon, they're not interested in salmon. They're interested in bass. So you don't sell that. You don't try, if you, if you said the greatest sales letter with the wrong fish, they're not gonna buy. You, wanna, you have to match the offer, the product with the list. The list is critical. If the list is too old, if the list is incorrect for the product, it's going to die no matter how good the copy is. Now, if you have a hot 
fresh list, hot, good copy, and you have an irresistible offer, you've got a very good chance to succeed. They have to be in balance. If you have a total flop in a mailing, I guarantee you one of those things is off base. One of the things is off. Now, the best list you'll ever have is, which one do you think it is? Your list. Your opt-in list if you're electronic or your opt-in list if you're non-electronic. The people that have raised their hand on a two-step basis, the people that have bought that first product, they're your best list, will always be your best list. You can't rent an outside list that's as good as your own.